right? That little notch, the orbital notch that we talked about, right? Is the, the orbital notch. So if you place your finger, you know that if the, if the notch is right here, don't don't be afraid. Oh! <laughs> 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 Hope you got that on tape. <laughs> So let's look over here. Jeez. If it's right, if it's <laughs> right there, if it's right there, right, you know the foramen is right there. I mean, you're talking like six millimeters mm -hmm. here to here. Okay. So take your finger and you slide inside someone's vestibule. Okay, slide your finger up. Okay. And I can tell you that the tip of my finger is right there. Okay, so I have to get from here to here with a needle. That's how high up I am inside his vestibule. My finger's going right up to here. So if I was going to give an inforbital nerve block, right, which I'm not going to do, <laughs> all right, I'm palpating the notch like that. I'm going to come in from the canine first bicuspid area, just like that. And Look at how look how high up we are. If you look inside, you realize that you're right you're right over here. Touch it. Look how high you are. Mm -hmm. Okay. So people think it's like, oh my God, you're going all you're not going far at all. It's nothing. You're talking about like another centimeter, right? And you're already there. So it's not that different. If you're giving an infiltration, I just wouldn't be pushing up in the vestibule so much. If I was doing an infiltration then I would just be injecting, look at the angle. Now, now I'm angling towards bone, and I'm pressing on bone. That's exactly where I'd be injecting, right there. Right? And as you come across the anterior, same thing. If you wind up injecting too high in the anterior, you're going to be in the nasal floor. So what? It's not, a big, it's not like something bad's going to happen to you, but all I'm showing you is that depending on how tall a person's maxilla is, you could be right there. I mean, I am, I'm right here. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't take much to go a little too high, and then all that's going to happen is that you're going to wind up and the patient's, the patient's going to go, because they're going to feel liquid coming through, right? <laughs> so it's not the end of the world. Okay, so let's have a look at the, the PSA block. So the PSA block... I palpate his zygomatic buttress, right? Everybody knows what the zygomatic buttress is. So your injection goes up, posterior, and medial. Up, posterior, and medial, like that. And you slide the needle up, and you go up about one and a half centimeters, and you inject, right? It's not, it's simple. It is an absolutely simple, simple injection. Okay, now the Gal Gates. You love that. Now this is where you get. So when I'm teaching the Gal Gates, I put my finger inside the ear because the tragus is what I'm looking for. Okay, you're at the level of the occlusal plane, so you're all the way up here. Oh, actually, let's see if he has that classic anatomy. I'm looking, for, I'm looking for the classic triangle, but anyway, so for your Gal Gates injection, here you are, I'm going to be aiming for that finger, and you have the patient open wide, there you are at the level of the occlusal plane, and you're coming all the way across from the contralateral bicuspid area, and you're going upward, and that, I'm looking at my finger, if you look, you're going to see that that's actually going right to my finger, right, and that's it, you go in until you hit bone, back off, Make sure that you aspirate, and away you go. Okay? That's where you'd wind up giving the Galgates, right there. Okay? Now it's hard to hold your, hold your mouth open like that. Yeah, now, right, <clears throat> take a break. Take <laughs> a break for a second. You, you should palpate intraorally for that one? or For the, for the Galgates, I have my finger. I'm... See, as you open your mouth wide, your coronoid comes forward and down, mm -hmm. right? So just close your mouth for a sec, and now open it. So I'm feeling his coronoid come forward and down, so I know this needle needs to be medial to the coronoid. 
correct? Mm -hmm. So I'm feeling the coronoid. Okay. So by feeling the coronoid, I know I got to be over here right. to be on the inside of the coronoid. The anterior margin of his coronoid is where my thumb is right now, right here. And this is where I'm injecting down here. I could even take out a, a model, a mandible, if you want. You want me to get that? Sure. sure. Yeah, that'd be great. Let's do that. All right. Who wants this syringe? It's all yours. Ha <laughs> 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 Yeah, you get some good angles there, Jason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I, he, where, he, where he was showing the landmark for the... Uh, the, and he was holding it for the I, I, I zoomed in for that. Do you see the triangle? Yeah, you know all the spots on me now. Perfect. <laughs> I gotcha. Yeah. I wouldn't mind putting gloves on being supervised by him. I'm showing. Honestly, I have no problem having you inject right now. What's the point, though? We see exactly where to go. There's no point in going and doing it. What's the point in freezing? Just how fast he does it. Slow. Just slow. Let's go one car per minute. Yeah. One car per minute. So look. Look over here for a sec. So when you're putting your hand inside the patient's mouth, what you're doing is you are you're rolling your hand on this anterior margin right over here, okay? And there you can see how thick the ramus is, okay? So when the patient opens their mouth, this is what happens to the coronoid. It comes forward like that and anteriorly and down like that. So now you're feeling this over here, right? Now I'm coming with a needle, when I'm feeling that, I'm coming from the contralateral bicuspid area, like that. So the mouth is, is, is in the open position, piercing the mucosa about here, and then you go and you contact the condylar neck, like that. That's why if you have your finger here, you are gonna miss this area. Otherwise, you have no idea where the coronoid is. Mm -hmm. If you feel that, you know that you've got to have your needle at least out here in order to miss it to get to the condylar neck. Mm -hmm. But that's exactly the way it looks, just like that. Now, when you're giving a mandibular block, did you see that? Yeah. When you're giving a mandibular block, okay, so here's your lingula, right there. So your injection not all that different. You're still palpating here. You're looking at your anatomy. You're looking for that, for the raffe. You come across, once again, the direct thrust technique is level of the mandibular occlusal plane. Come across, direct thrust like that. And that's what it looks like. That's where you're ending up, just above the lingula. Okay, coming so straight across, just like that. And you're just contacting the bone, You usually posterior and superior to the lingula. Yeah. If you are below the lingula, you will get nothing. Because what attaches to the lingula in this area? Temporalis. You've got a ligament. Right, <laughs> and you'll you'll never be able to infiltrate through that ligament. It's impossible. Okay, so that's that's one of the reasons why the block won't work, is because you're too low. So the the joke always is aim high, aim high. <laughs> right, to make sure that you're above. Okay, so if I was going to give a mental block, okay, there is the mental framing right there. All right. This is where you're coming into the vestibule like this, straight down, and you're aiming the needle inward till you contact bone. And this is where you need to know, and you could be here, you could be here, you could be here, you could be here, you could be anywhere around this foramen. I can tell you right now, if you infiltrate this area, that local anesthetic is gonna get into that nerve canal, and will track along and give you anesthesia. All right, anterior to the foramen. And you always do it with the pan, though. And you always do it with? You do it with the pan for mental. With the pan? I do, but if you have a periapical, that's fine. 
no problem. But you have to know where it is to be able to give a proper mental nerve block. If you, otherwise, you're guessing. Mm -hmm. If you just say, oh, it's between the two premolars, well, yeah, but it, it, it isn't always exactly there. It's close to there. You can try it. But your success rates can be much higher if you know exactly where it is. Okay? So let's go back to you. Now that we've kind of seen it on the model. It's almost like it's four. Jeez. I'd love to have three, three and three of you kind of lined up and you can actually feel. Yeah, I'd like to do that. Really, like, like palpate the landmarks and. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Make fun of me. I'm a guinea pig. <laughs> okay, but let's just have a peek, man. Just open wide for a sec. I'm just looking at his anatomy to see if there's anatomy that. Mm. <laughs> okay. There's not, nothing that is earth shattering here that I'm going to say, oh guys, you got to see this because this is the classic anatomy. But by the way, that's most patients. That's why the classic anatomy doesn't even hold true. So if you're giving a mandibular block to him, I still have him open wide. I palpate along just like I did before. And then I'd be coming in at a centimeter above the occlusal plane, bang right across from the contralateral bicuspids. I'd come straight in, straight across, just like that. If I was going to do a mental block, okay, I would be pulling his vestibule out just like this. Actually, we'd have you down like that. All right, I'd look at my radiograph. I'd see where it is. The injection would then go a little bit out in the vestibule. But look at my angle aiming in towards the mandible because I know where the inferior border is. And the injection would look something like that. Okay. Feel the cheek one more time. Okay. There it goes. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's, let's not hurt the patient. <laughs> okay. Just like that. And you're going to contact bone every time. You will not miss it. If you have to go a little bit lower, if your frame it looks lower, and you just size it up, like just open your mouth a little bit. In your mind, envision, there's his crown. There's the apex of his root. Right? Just envision it in your mind. Look for it. Sometimes you can actually see the metal, the metal nerve fibers coming out. I'm looking to see if I can see that. Just open your mouth a little bit more. And you can't with him. Sometimes you'll actually see a couple of white little wisps of fibers coming out, and, and that's also some branches of the metal nerve, but I'm not seeing it. Okay, that's awesome. Inforbital nerve, gout gates block, standard mandibular block, mental nerve block. PSA? PSA. We did that. We did? Mm -hmm. um, okay, let's get someone else in the chair. Let's switch. Mm -hmm.